do this. Hello guys, welcome back for more, um, Mario of the Six for Variety. If I, if I, if it seems like I'm incredibly drunk, I just woke up. Wait, just woke up from what? A nap? I took a really long nap. And I like, I swear to god, I woke up in this like, trance. By the way, we've already recorded this episode once. Why are we in this level? I thought we um, already got the stars. We recorded this episode once before, but I had scrapped the coin for various reasons. What? You didn't tell me about this. Yes, I did. You just were probably half asleep as always. Look, look, look. I'm not a bad co-worker. I'm just... I swear, Jugs, I'm not on promise. No, 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 no. I'm not... I'm on a special kind of drug. It's called... After sleep. It's when you wake up from sleep and you're not really yourself. Okay. Why for your excuses? Um, uh, actually... You wanna know something interesting? What, well, um, I'm about to die? No. Uh, I don't know if you, um, if I told you about this already, but I low-key met Charles Martin the other day. Hmm. So it was at Nintendo New York, and they were doing that one of those, like, oh, chat with Mario events. Which is really just, you know, Charles Martin disguised behind a screen that has th Mario in it. No, wait... Oh, no, I did my club. So, you had to ask <laughs> Mario questions. Oh, yeah. uh. um, you had to ask Mario questions, and to be honest, Mario was asking me more questions than I was asking him. Nope, not ha oh, I don't have cheat saved. <laughs> okay, so. When it came to, um, he asked me what's my favorite Mario game, I answered Odyssey, and I even told him, um, that my first game was, um, Super Mario 64 DS, you know, that was the first game I ever played, and he was even like, ah, yes, Mario 64, like, thank you so much for playing my game, you know, he said, like, that's, that's what I said at the end of that game, right? <laughs> And then he even said, like, you know, fun fact, Super Mario 64 was the first game where I got to speak quite a bit. Before then, all I had was Mario teaches typing. <laughs> That's the best video game ever, though. I'm surprised he even referenced it. <laughs> well, it was start of his most famous career. Yeah, true enough, but the funny thing is, too, I'm pretty sure that's not where he started. <laughs> Like, he was definitely in Mar Mario Teaches Typing. He definitely was. But, I think the first game that he was the voice of Mario was, like, one game on, like, a PC or something where you played cards with him. You played cards with Mario, and I think that was the first game with Charles Martinet. And Mario 64... Was the first officially Nintendo released Mario game to have him? Hi, Mips. We got oh, say yeah, hi. Mips. We're not collecting him for a reason, so I can show off a glitch later in the extra videos. You know, Mips has a much larger role in the DS version. Like, yep. what does he do in this game? In this version, give you a star, and also I suck at games. You know, if you get it, you know, that, you know, if you honestly die to the bottom, to the quicksand, you deserve to die. That was a lit jump. <laughs> can, can I tell you something? What the heck? Oh, no. Oh, no. What the hell happened there? Okay, so, let me tell you something. If you die via the quicksand, you kind of deserve to, because it's so easy to get out. You know? Yeah. Time to kill the freaking whatever this thing is. Oh yeah, this buckhead. 
Oh, okay. oh, I guess fire just doesn't exist when you're stuck in sand. Oh, you white boy. <laughs> oh. But he can still see your hat. Don't, don't, don't get, don't. You may be immune to fire. Don't think, don't think you're immune to hat. So, in the DS version, not having your hat makes power-ups become bombs. Is that true in this version, too? Wait, power-ups become what? Bombs. I didn't know that. Yeah, in DS, if you try to grab a power-up when your hat is gone, either nothing will happen or a bomb will come out. Alright, I'm doing wrong stuff. <laughs> like, next time he steals your hat, open up that, um, box. Um, by the way, interesting thing, I don't know which version it is, but in one of the versions, Super Mario 6 or either DS one or this one, if you lose your hat and teleport, then re-teleport back, you clone your hat. It's probably this one. Oh wait, no, it works in both versions, but the other version requires a little bit more of a setup. Alright. Did you know that? Did you know that? Apparently, at least when it comes to the Ocarina of Time 3D remake, Nintendo sometimes intentionally keeps the glitches. Okay, they're too lazy. No, no, no. Because uh, here's the thing. Um, remember, uh, most of the remakes use completely new assets, so as a result, glitches just can't be transferred over. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they it. They intentionally programmed the glitches in which, at that point, is it a glitch or an untold feature? Uh, you know, because, like, here. if it's an intentional thing, is it a glitch or an untold feature? <laughs> you see where I'm getting at here? It, I don't know. Cause like, you know the trick where like you can get a hundred gold skulltulas without actually looking for the hundred gold skulltulas? I have it, but I've never seen it done. I've done it. You wanna know why I did it? Cause I could not be arsed to, to look for all the gold skulltulas. How do you even do it? Okay, so... Here's how it- here's how you do it. It's- it's a very hard process and it's very easy to mess up, but don't worry. Due to how Ocarina of Time saves, you should be good. So, uh, when you're playing the game, there's one particular gold skulltula in like a in like a pit or something, and in that game, Link has the boomerang. Now, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to kill the gold skulltula with the boomerang, and then because the boomerang also collects things, you're supposed to um, grab the Boomerang as well. You're supposed to grab the metal with the boomerang, but as the metal as the boomerang comes back to you You have to go back into the pit. you know how like there's a light in the pit that makes you go back to the surface Yeah, oh you're talking about that glitch. Yeah, I remember yes that. You have to go into the light and then if you do this repeatedly the gold skulltula will repeatedly keep spawning if hey. you do it enough um. Yeah. An easy sub for that glitch is set uh, a bomb in front of you, then throw the boomerang right before it explodes. Oh, really? Yeah, because bomb will push you into the pit. Huh. I should probably show off these stars. Since they were gone in the cut episode. Oh, that was the pro. Yes. Wait, wait. Oh, hey, the wind tornado. I have a question. What? In actual deserts, is this actually fucking possible? I don't know. Like, is it possible? Because I know, like, um, sandstorms are a thing, right? Yeah. But what about, like, sand tornadoes? Like, is that a thing? Alright, um, to humor me, have you had it? Oh yeah, that's right, it's a blue star because you already had Alright, to humor me, can you, like, have your hat stolen? What do you mean? I want to see. 
Because I know for a fact in the DS version, try to get a power up with a hat, either nothing happens or a bob bomb comes after you. Can you, like, confirm sure. with me if that happens here? Just Thank you. Not while we're doing the star. Alright. You know. You're just, just totally gonna fuck this in the ass, aren't you? I don't even know how you get <laughs> a ten the attentional way. I've always you done know, that, even though.